set. Okay. It's being recorded. Good. And, uh, uh, okay, where were we? Thank you for coming and thank you for Sandy for making the announcements and of course Raymond who is behind the scenes and make sure that we do function properly. And um, of course, a lot of people wonder, are we doing much? But we, we seem to be very busy behind the scenes. You know, board members are all occupied with whatever we have to do. Quite so many meetings and, and events we can go to. And um, also, um, you may remember that uh, Sandy sent a note regarding the pop-up garden for Tava and Francois. Did you go up, uh, Sandy? Yes, okay. I was there today, yeah. this morning, very early. Yeah, and apparently not too many people uh, have gone up to see the garden. So uh, maybe you'd like to, Sandy did send out the email the other day. Maybe you'd like to recheck and have a look at the gardens. And um, also um, the June mini flower show, which is on page five in our newsletter. And um, don't forget to look and, and send in some of your entries. And uh, of course, uh, is our speaker here yet? I am, I'm right here. Hi, everybody. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, of course, there you are. Of course. I'm up in the corner. <laughs> you see, I hadn't seen you for two years. I forgot what you look like. <laughs> yeah, um, Jackie and I, we met at Canada Bloom two years ago. She yeah. was speaking on stage and it was a, a good talk. And uh, we uh, spent some time together talking about it. And it's hard to believe it's two years ago already. I know it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's I just- It's incredible, you know? Yeah. And um, I'm glad you're here. And uh, well, maybe we can get started. And um, Jackie will do her talk. And uh, like we would do in a live meeting, we can ask questions after and-, uh, and um, She'll, you know, be able to answer all our... So Jackie, why don't you go ahead? Okay, thanks, Annette. Thank you for having me. Okay, I'm going to share my screen, and then we will... Okay. All right. Okay. And now I'm just going to do presentation mode. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Thumbs up. Well, thank you so much for having me, and uh, I'm thrilled to be part of this. And like I said, we met a few years ago, and it's just uh, I'm I'm anxious to get back to Canada Blooms and to see all the gardens and the shows and and as soon as possible. But it's been definitely a different world. So this um, this presentation, I hope it just inspires you. Um, I didn't do too many herbs in this one. It's sort of I can I can substitute that out. But it's basically about unusual containers and looking at just creative ways to um, to plant in containers in the garden. So I hope you're inspired by it and you can check out my website, uh, plantinginspiration.com. I'm working on it right now, I'm putting some more things up, but uh, it'll be up and running. Well, it's up and running, but it'll be fully loaded in a couple of weeks. All right, so this is my garden, just a snapshot. And I think, you know, for me, I love foliage. So my garden is, I'm, I'm, I've got a very small backyard and I like to maximize what I do in the yard. So I've got, you know, I, I don't shy away from putting plants closer together. I have fun with it. I do a lot of foliage. Um, I'm really obsessed with that. And I think the containers really for me, because I have a small, small garden, they become a focal point as well. And they're around the yard. On any given year, I have between um, 20 to 30 containers, whether it be a small little container like you see on this table, uh, whether it be one that's on the fence, whether it's a larger container, a hanging basket, um, I've got all sorts of different sets of containers. And, and, and typically mines are like the normal shape ones. And I started to think about this presentation and I started to, over the different years, I started to collect different inspirational pieces and I'm definitely on the way to incorporating some of these in my gardens. And I hope that you will be too, I hope you'll be inspired. Um, but this is just a quick snapshot of my garden. 
Here's the other, the right side of the garden. And again, I have, you know, matching pots and things like that. And I put different obelisks and, and different, different pieces in there, but I really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of inspiring you with containers. So these are a couple of my containers that I have currently. Um, so this year I'm using, I, I got this a couple of years ago and I'm using the cone shape. And again, what I try to do with my containers is I try to put unusual combinations in this. So you'll see this is a succulent. Um, this is a calancho, another succulent. Then I've got an ivy. This is something that I've, the calancho and the ivy is something that I've brought from indoor, from the indoor containers. I take them out in the garden. And as long as they don't get direct sunlight, I like combining the different combinations of plants. And of course I'll layer it in with summer, summer uh, pieces as well. I also layer in perennials. So this is a painted fern with a calancho in this particular basket. So I like to mix and match. And it's really to for you to think about your containers in a completely different way, because sometimes your house plants need to get out into the yard to just get a little bit more growth for you to trim them and not in direct sunlight. Some of them can't handle it, but in a shaded area, this is under the pergola. It's fantastic. And the succulents as well, too. And I can bring them back in and they're going to grow bigger and better. And also um, with perennials like this one, it's going to put into the garden later on in the season. So if I have extra plants or I bought a perennial and I'm not sure how it's going to be, uh, one way you can do is trial it to see what the the shade or the sun or whatever the requirements of the plant is, you can move it around in the containers and see if it's doing great or not. And then when you move it into the garden, you know exactly where to place it. Um, and I like, it's also a great way to save some money because if you bring out your indoor plants, like I have here and you use some of your perennials in the bed or you buy something and it's going to go into the garden, you're, and these calanchos can come back into the house and they bloom, you know, in the middle of February when there's nothing happening inside. Um, I think it's just a nice way to save some dollars and have some interest. And then you have some really, you know, unique containers that you've put together with your plant material. But let's get into some more interesting ones. So this is this is one that I did last year. And again, not a not an interesting container at all, but again, the looking at the layer of the foliage of Mandevilla with, the, with Ivy, mixing the combinations and just having them stream over. I kind of like the filler, thriller, spiller idea. So you've got like a main thriller plant, which is the Mandevilla. You've got the spiller, which is, um, for me, like the ivies and the different variations, but it's just really whatever you like. Uh, this is a this is an actual container, and I see a lot of containers. Bird cages are huge right now. You can find them at yard sales. You can find them on Pinterest. You can find them on Kijiji. They're all over the place. This was actually a container, though, that's made to look like a planter. That's an actual bird cage, um, and I just loved it when I saw it. And you've got the, the little bird hanging in there and it's all metal, it's all for outdoor, or you can take him out if you plant something that's a little bit higher. Um, but love this because it's got the container at the bottom and you can poke some holes in it or you can line it if you want to bring it in the inside. Um, but bird cages are a huge trend right now in terms of containers. So if you see one, not only are they really unique, I mean, old, the old fashioned bird cages are just gorgeous. I mean, they have different shapes and you can, you can definitely plant in them or you can use them in the garden. Okay, so these are some off the top, you know, just uh, sort of off the wall ideas. So when I when I gathered this picture, uh, I thought, wow, geez, lumber is such an incredible price now. This is probably not even going to happen. We have a pallet shortage uh, across the world right now. So this is probably a luxury. But back in the day when I got this picture, this was very, very unique. Um, and it was very readily available. But even if, you know, you get a skid of something or you know somebody who works and they've got a skid, I thought this was such a great way um, to do succulents primarily because it's just very, very, very shallow. The openings in the pallets are extremely shallow. And what's nice is you can create a vertical living wall. Um, so they've got a little bit of dirt. They're not going to be falling out. You can actually angle the pallet. And, you know, for some gardens, it's nice and rustic. It blends in quite nicely or it stands out on its own if you do it like this, like creating a living wall with different color combinations. And what's nice is the openings are small, too. So you don't need these large plants necessarily coming out. You can do some trailers like the Dichondra here, or you can do, you know, just a sedum or you can do you know, really easy plants or really gra or ground covers that just go all over the place. This is candula. You can do ground covers that are, you know, very easy to pull a little bit from your garden and put this in. But I thought it was a really interesting idea. It might even be to hide something up against a wall, depending upon the angle that you put this at. Uh, but sometimes we've got some walls with some things or, um, you know, air conditioners and things like that. Like this could be strategically positioned or you can even do, you know, one pallet on one side and then have another one up against the other side. So just thought it was, it's a really unusual container requiring very little soil. Um, 
depending on how big you want it, you could cut this down and it could just be a half. It could be just like a picture frame or it could be the full palette. So I love the flexibility of that because it's readily available, very inexpensive, except this year with lumber. I don't know what it's going to be like to get a pallet, um, but if you can get your hands on one and it works in your garden, it's definitely something um, interesting to, you know, and it's going to weather and it definitely provides some, some, uh, some interest or it can block something if you're trying to hide something or sort of clean up an area. So just a thought for that. I love this, these ideas. So pots, uh, broken pots um, kind of started this trend, but taking an existing pot and sometimes for me, these little sort of pots are sometimes you'll find beautiful pots you'll have them in your home or you have them outside or you find them and they're too small because nothing will really grow and it'll, it'll require so much you know heartache to kind of monitor this for for certain plants and i love the idea of taking something and spilling out so if you already have a patch of something wonderful in your garden whether it be a ground cover the sedum um, incorporating the pot i think we've all seen this idea it's definitely not new but i think it's a wonderful way to use a container in the garden oh let me put on my timer um, okay, this next shot is my garden. So this is the containers as well. And whether they're, I, I find the, the rectangular longer containers are just great. This year I have sunflowers growing in one of these. I love them because you can do, you know, massive groupings in them and it sort of creates a scene. Um, but again, whether, you know, this is potato vines and see them combining different things. I love how that you can get a fair bit in this and it's pretty skinny and they actually add height. So it's not an unusual container, but what I love about these ones is that they create height and interest and it provides just one container instead of many containers. And then you can style in front of it, you can do things that completely hang over. Uh, but again, it's the color combinations and the, and the, and the um, what you put in the containers. Wheelbarrows. Okay, so this has been, since the beginning of time, wheelbarrows have been, you know, we, we love them. We love to use them actually for the practicality of them and being in the garden but using them to plant, it's just a fascinating idea. And I've seen all sorts from old rustic antique ones to brand new modern ones, um, to smaller ones, bigger wheels, you know, smaller wheels, you name it, it runs the gamut. I quite like this combination here where it softens a little bit of the wheels and the actual wheelbarrow, but it's still got a nice base. And I, I love that it elevates in the garden and you can do, it's got a fairly, you know, good size circumference, most wheelbarrows. And it's interesting visually as well instead of a container, instead of a typical container. And it fits quite nicely with the theme of the garden. And I find with our wheelbarrows, we use them when we're building up the garden. My garden's about eight to 10 years old now, like certain parts is pretty mature. There's just some areas that are a couple of years old, but most of it's eight to 10 years. And so it's, you know, you already have some existing things in the garden that you can do this with, or sometimes you wanna not use your wheelbarrow anymore because you've done all the work and it's your garden's eight years old and you're not really, you know, you're bringing in soil and compost and things like that. So you're not really using it. It's hanging in the garage um, or you, you know, you've got one from your parents or somebody else's house and they don't want it. But I thought it's a great way. You can even spray paint it. You can, I mean, you can be creative with this section of it to really make it vibrant or just leave it as natural um, the way it is that rustic look, but it's a great opportunity. I mean, they've got a fountain grass in here. They've got, you know, potato vines and petunias. You can do so much in it. You can make it perennials because it's deep enough and you can do just annuals if you want as well. Some dusty miller, some petunias, some calabrachoa. Um, so it really depends on what you want, but I love the idea of wheelbarrows. So I'm on the hunt to find a smaller one, not a large one uh, to incorporate in a certain area of my, um, in my garden. I just love this idea. I mean, I, this is just so interesting and, and outrageous. It's like, you know, a lay in a bed of roses or a bed um, using an old bed frame really creatively. And I have another close up of the shot, but I mean, sort of for the scope of this, you know, sort of setting the tone for this, it, it seems really outrageous, but it's, it's really quite an interesting idea. I mean, you can even put it up against the fence as long as you're doing it tastefully and it's working with what you've got. But I love this idea because they've just used um, one plant there. You see it on the right. They've just used the, like the creeping Jenny, the one plant and the header. So I think if it was filled with flowers, um, it might look a little bit strange, but I think it's sort of, you know, creating the look of a comforter or creating the look of a linen. So keeping it one tone and layering it with pillows. But what a fun, beautiful idea. Um, you know, if, if you have white in your garden as well, like a white picket fence or black or something, you could tie this in or you can actually blend it out so the headboard doesn't stand out as much, that the color and the interest is really about the flowers. But I just thought it was really clever and really interesting. 
Okay, love this one too. An old barrel or an old wine, um, wine. I mean, just using barrels, but not in the traditional way. And I've seen the barrels where the flowers are spilling out um, or where it's completely cut open. This one is sort of basically keeping it intact with the old rings um, and then incorporating, you know, this is, they just incorporated a little birdhouse in it. But what a creative idea. Um, and just something interesting, you know, and using the different bands and the layers, not just a complete opening, having different layers to it. I thought it just provides some interest. And again, certain things like this looks pretty rustic and, and it can fit into the yard. This one's more contemporary, it's metal, but it still works out galvanized with the fence that they have. So really take a look at if you want the piece to be, you know, this great big colorful focal point, or if you want it to kind of just blend away and provide height and interest and personality, but the plant will be the show or, you know, the, or, the, or the, this barrel in particular is more subtle. It still does provide a lot of interest, but it's not like a big bright red or bright blue or bright color. Um, so it's a little bit more subtle and it blends in with adding architectural difference rather than just, you know, wow vision. And you can have both. I mean, it really depends. It's uh, just like we choose the flowers. Um, it's, it really depends on what you want to do. Now, I always, I always find that the little pots too are, are so problematic because you're not sure what to do with them. And I saw this idea on Pinterest and I absolutely just love this. There's a couple of different slides. I mean, you can really get as intricate. And I, my, my biggest concern is that, you know, try to find all of these sedums and things like that in special order and them having them come all together but what a great idea and i love this one with the pot in the pot itself so this is taking a pot filling it up with your 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 succulent medium and succulents are great because they're very very shallow and they don't require a lot of watering um and you, i think with when you do this type of uh beautiful arrangement you've got to keep it to something like this which is can handle not much growth and can handle a shallow container and that can handle smaller little intricacies. I love even using the teacup in this. I thought this was so pretty and so beautiful. I mean, I was just blown away by these. I didn't even think this was possible. So it goes to show you sometimes that, I mean, I've in the past I've given away old containers or pots thinking, oh, they're too small. They're not gonna be interesting, but wow. Um, com a combination of the plants, something meaningful. And this one's really speaks to me because I'm a tea drinker. So I'm thinking of how to create my own piece. Here's a couple more, um, if you don't like sort of that more formal look and you know, very much color, this is a little bit more natural. Again, we all have these, you can find these at thrift stores. Um, you, you, you can find these, you have extra pots laying around, even clay pots, and it depends on the mediums you put, You know, even, even little teacups as well, we all have that. So a simplified version, whether you want it to look a little bit more rustic, whether you want it to be you know, a little bit more um, movement to it, like this coming out of it, almost coming off this side of the pot, or like the other ones I've shown you where they're more colorful and more intricate and really a detailed. And I love this one, how it's got the granular. Um, this one has the bigger chunks. The previous one had, you know, just a little bit of a fine medium here and then, you know, really, really fine rock. So you can go from something that's really colorful and sort of bursting out three dimensional uh, with a lot of color, you know, with a neutral background or, or you can go something more earthy where the background is the focal point as well, in addition to the plants. So I just love how there's different combinations to that. Um, so these are kind of wild and crazy ideas as well too. So the one on the left is like an old stove. Um, and so the insert of that, and I thought, wow, like normally you think, okay, is that gonna look right? I mean, but it could have been even a planting station, a potting station, um, it, depending upon where you put it. Uh, but this person's put it in the, in the garden and it actually kind of works. It's, it's actually not an eyesore. It works nicely. And then she's kind of layered it with different elements, like, you know, with the plants coming out of it. So instead of actually just storing stuff, using it in this way, but it, this could have also been transformed um, into like a potting station that you can use in the garden. But just kind of, again, thinking outside the box with containers. This is an old satellite dish. And I thought this was just amazing because it actually gives a huge circumference. So you can actually do you know, a beautiful display with personality, um, you know, in an area, maybe if you needed some round or some break up some corners or some rectangular boxes, or you needed just a bit of movement. Um, and I thought this was great. It's, it's a bit shallower, but they can be deeper as well. But what a great use. And, and it plays to the, you know, these two pieces in particular plays to the, the recycling as well, too. And things that sometimes we, we think, you know, if you have an old satellite dish or you have an old stove or, or an old chest of drawers, for example, which I'll show you later on, that I'm just going to get rid of this thing. But you know what? I think uh, we just all, we're, we're home now with COVID as well. And we're just looking for different ideas. 
and you have different needs in your gardens. And I think if you can really sort of, the key is to blend it into the landscape, not to have it be an eyesore, have it to be like, it, it's meant to be there. Like you have to guess what that is or that it fits in perfectly and natural. That's gonna be the best way that you actually integrate it. So it looks like it was always there or it's a part of the garden. Here's another little, this one's like a little wheelbarrow uh, scenario as well. And it's got a lot of bright color. Um, this one's for a spring application with bulbs. So it's only temporarily in the garden. So it can come out and be on a front porch and just, you know, or even at Christmas time be used uh, with fresh greens or evergreens. So it really depends, but there's lots of different ways. So I'm on the hunt now for searching for containers that are going to be unique and creative and see how I can incorporate them. And I think the key is as well, you know, one thing I caution you on is not to put too many things in the garden, because as much as I, I think this is a great idea for the potting station for me, they've got it as a focal point for plants and the satellite dish and, and or this, they're three separate gardens. Uh, but if you, you've really got to think about, you know, what that's going to look like in your space and you probably don't want to do too many angles because then it actually creates too much uh, it takes your eyes away from the garden itself. So I think you got to pick your poison and decide what you like, what you can reuse, what you can repurpose, what the focal point is, because you don't want to have too many focal points as well in the garden because the garden itself is beautiful. So here's, I mean, this one, I've seen this so many times when we've been to thrift stores or yard sales in the past, not this year, obviously. And I thought, wow, I mean, I would have never in a million years think to do something like that. But how clever is that and how beautiful? And imagine if this piece was sentimental reason, but it was broken or, you know, you just didn't want to use it any anymore in that capacity. But what a clever idea of opening some of the drawers so you get a bit of the depth and, you know, lining them and putting the right mediums in them as well. So you don't want this to rot out if you want to do it really well or if you want it to be temporary. If you want it to be more long term, you've really got to line all of these and make sure that, you know, you've, you've, you've made it appropriate for the weather. Or if it's going to be covered under a covered area, that would be good because all of the wood and the pieces will get damaged. And if you don't want a distressed look, you want something more like its original piece. But how clever and wonderful. And again, the a really good use of sedium because sedum because it's just really uh or succulents because they're really great to incorporate and they kind of they don't sort of take over uh this is a more simpler idea but reusing sort of a wheel a wheel uh wheel well ring and then putting the baskets in so i've seen the wagon wheels and i've seen all sorts of different oh sorry i've seen all sorts of wheels in the gardens but i haven't seen you know a hanging basket hanging this low through a through a circular um fixture like this and I thought that is just amazing I was so inspired by that so I hope that gives you some new life when you've got you know when you're thinking about um, incorporating shapes and this could be a square it could be a picture frame it could be whatever you want it to be as long as it's going to work in the elements for you in the garden but I thought that was really really clever and I love the I love the the circular and almost like it's a ga gateway and a pathway and that the hanging basket is at a lower level so you can actually see the flowers. But sometimes we have our hanging baskets a little bit higher and we don't kind of get to see that aerial view of it. Um, and this one, because it's you know beyond, you can look down at this as you're walking by, you're gonna get a different perspective and there's different plant combinations that you can incorporate in this, uh, this type of container. I thought this was just fabulous. I mean, I have a couple of bird, bird houses in my um, garden as well, too. And I saw this one and I thought, oh, how wonderful. Uh, using, again, the succulents, which are big. And I know I keep repeating those because when it's something like this, you don't have the capacity um, to put a lot of dirt. So you need to be, you know, and to water it. So something like putting the sea moss and, and then sort of working back. Uh, with the succulents, they're going to be much better suited to something like this where you can put them in the right environment. But it's just a clever idea and a clever way uh, to incorporate plants with a different container and shut the birds out in this one. <laughs> um, lanterns, I mean, from fairy gardens, I've seen, I'm seeing a lot of that now, fairy gardens in the last couple of years. These are sort of, you know, if you have that and you already have it in the garden, sometimes we don't use it as much. You can put plants in it or you can actually put a garden scene in it. So you can use your these containers uh, for plant life um, or you can use them to create a garden scene in it. And I love the shot on the right of the wreath. So grapevine wreaths. I've had so many of those and I, I usually rework them at different holidays like the fall and Christmas. But imagine actually putting one in your yard if you have a, you know, a garden gate. Um, or somewhere leading into your house from the garden and you could on a door you could put this wreath and it's actually live 
So it's live plants so that it works with the garden. And then, you know, you can take it off, plant them in the garden, bring them in the plants. Uh, but again, sedum lends itself or the succulents lend themselves really well to this. But I thought, what a fantastic idea. I never thought of that. Bird bats we've probably seen. Um, I love these ones. I love the, the two tiered or, you know, sometimes even a singular one. The one on the left is a two tiered one, but I love it. They are shallow and sometimes they don't have really good drainage. Um, so you might have to have somebody, you know, poke some holes with a, the right drill and a, a cement bit so that you, because the last thing you want to have is any of your containers, any of the containers that I show you when you do the plants as gardeners, you know, you've got to have good drainage. So it might uh, mean incorporating you know, new holes into this if you're going to use it for a different a different piece, because especially with succulents, if you put them in a bird bath with no proper drainage and there's a down pouring and this is out in the open, they're going to be dead within a couple of days because they're going to be waterlogged and soggy. But if you can adjust it for that, um, you know, sometimes we get tired of our bird bath, sometimes we become too messy. You know, we don't want the upkeep of it but we still like it and it's very meaningful. I'm all for repurposing and using it. Um, and I thought these were both well done. And if you're gonna get a bird bath, I mean, something with a bit of an interest up the top is nice because it just it just keeps creating that length to the plants and to the gardens. And it fits quite nicely in the garden because of the stone. So quite like that one as well. Uh, I mean, this is, this is not new as well. We've seen these in all the little towns. Sometimes when you drive, you know, as we're heading up to the Corth, as you see this a lot, you see all these bicycles. And uh, I love the idea of painting it out one color rather than having it multiple colors, but I've seen many different combinations um, and then incorporating baskets with plants on it. So you can do this with, you know, as, as, as being as creative as you want. Bikes are going to be very hard to find this year though. Um, the natural logs. I love this. This was at a resort in Florida. And I love this one because it's just like taking driftwood. It's taking a natural piece of wood and then incorporating different plants in it. And it just, it fits in anywhere. It can be quite a focal point. It can be various different sizes, but I love incorporating the wood where you plant things in it. And then you can get into more air plants as well for smaller ones that don't have the capacity to hold a lot of soil, or you can have you know, an entire log cut out and have this really artistic piece in your yard. Um, so just thought this was just stunning and beautiful and, and another focal point on its own. So think outside the box with our containers. So these ones are a little bit smaller. One, the one on the left is, you know, we all have these beautiful basins uh, from the past. And I love the movement of this one. Instead of just using it as a pot, um, tilting it, having the angle. So when you do use a container that's maybe typical or traditional, if you want to use it in a different way, angling it is a great way to do that. Um, this one is actually, the, you know, covering up the container. And I thought that was brilliant. So if there's something that you have that you want to reuse in the garden and that it's a container that maybe you're not fond of, but you like the height in the basin, you know, you, what you're going to put in it. If you put something like a sphagnum moss or you put dry or you do something that's an ivy that's going to completely cover it up. Sometimes we're looking at a container and it looks like an eyesore or, you know, a fixture or a statue in the garden that could work as a container. But I love this idea to show you that like, hey, you can cover that up with plants. Um, if it wasn't so pretty or if it wasn't something that you wanted to see, or if, it, if it's fine and you wanted to create a statement, you've definitely got the height. And this sits really well uh, within with lower plants and then giving the particles some vertical interest with the grasses shooting up, the downward spiral of this moss, the sphagnum moss, and then, you know, plants all around it. So think about the layering, you know, the top, the middle and the bottom as well. So love the movement of this. This one is the one on the left is a shot from somewhere in Siena in Italy. And it's like, oh my gosh, to me, I look at this as it's a nightmare to water <laughs> and to take care of. And as gar fellow gardeners, we're like, wow, that's, you know, that's a lot of pots to take care of. And, you know, for me, you know, I would forget one as I was doing it. And then there would be one pot that would be totally brown and dead. So, I mean, it depends on how much maintenance but but what it, what it what it inspired me was to show look at these little containers i mean and you can create by using many of them like you know in in this such a strategic way on a boring white wall the side of a house in italy and i mean our houses aren't like this but you've got walls and things like that that you know just can be totally transformed if you're willing to you know just be creative and put in the work i mean this one would be definitely a lot of work to maintain and and keep uh, keep going but how gorgeous is that um, and you definitely need some, you know, some high rod reaching uh, watering pieces, you know, but again, if you if you're willing to do the work and you can see the vision, it's gorgeous containers can really make a statement and on their own or group together. And this one's, you know, just like a walk up porch. I thought how fabulous instead of just, you know, the planters that we have are gorgeous on our on our on our doorsteps and our porches and on our decks and all of that. 
but I love the idea of, you know, something more personalized, like the K, you know, obviously the person's last name or first name, and then incorporating flowers in that as well, too. And this, you know, having this done or having it, have it specifically, you know, made or being able to purchase it and having it, that personalization, if your last name is begin with K or, and then, you know, using it as a focal wall and using it as in combination with the plants on the porch, for example. I love that because again, it adds interest to, you know, bare siding that you couldn't do and maybe they can't hang a hanging basket here. But again, it's another interest, interesting way to bring plants and flowers and containers up a different level, a different viewpoint. So I love that. I thought it was really creative and well done. This one's another interesting idea. And typically when we think of, you know, patios and things like that, it wouldn't be unusual to see these urns at all. But then I love the fact that, you know, anchoring the urns as the base to almost create a garden um, and then having, you know, these other planters and having this, this go up in a way, and it almost is creating like a wall of privacy. Imagine when this is completely filled in. I mean, you've got privacy with flowers because typically we think, okay, we, you know, we can plant something here that's super tall, but to actually use containers in a creative way where you, you, you have a plant, you know, that's going to be growing like a vine and actually you utilize that and maximize your, your containers with three sets of plants and something that's growing and that's gonna serve purpose and using the, these pipelines and things for trellises. It's a fabulous way to, to, if you wanted some privacy and even if it's not privacy, it's just gorgeous. I mean, it's just a great way to utilize the deck and it's nice and clean and it's, and it's still contained, but it has the opportunity to have real personality and, and real growth. Um, so this one was it when I was in Niagara on the lake before COVID. Um, this was in one of the shops and they had planted up an, a picture frame with the succulents in it. And it sort of was like three dimensional because it was coming out. But I thought old picture frames or shadow boxes that have some depth to them. Another creative way to use something like that. Um, and you could put this at a window um, or you could put this in the garden and then bring it in depending on the light you have. But again, you sort of every time you look at something now, I hope that at the end of this presentation, you're going to be like, hmm. Am I going to throw you out or can I use you tastefully in the garden or can I use you to plant when you're thinking about something or when you go out to buy something, a new container, you'll kind of, you know, think, think of outside the box. I love this one using the, the one on the left, using chicken wire and an old frame. And this was just great uh, for a trailing plant, even vegetables like cucumbers. I've seen it done. Um, the one on the right, much more ornate, you know, single uh, urns that are ornate and just over the top in terms of detail and personality. And when you do that, you can have them on their own because they make a statement all on their own. But, you know, whether it's incorporating something in the garden on the fence where you actually need, you know, instead of a trellis, you've used the chicken wire, which will be covered up quite nicely by the Svinka or Black Eyed Susan uh, vine um, with an old picture frame. And, you know, this could be metal, it could be wood, it could be distressed, you could paint it, you could, you know, make it weatherproof or you can work with it. But another great container or containment of a plant within the garden, creating a focal point. So love that idea. Okay, the one on the left too, uh, sorry, the one on the right, another idea with a picture frame where that's all done much more intricate, much more, um, you know, it, that, one's a, that one's a beast to take care of and make sure it looks perfectly. Take a picture if you do something big like that, because when things change, and subbing it out with, with the succulents are very easy to do with something like this. But I mean, for me, I think that might be too much for me. I like the smaller one where it's a little bit more movement, but it all depends. And this one, you know, is being hung on a fence. What a great piece of art. If you can incorporate that into the garden, what a conversation piece. And this one is just a combination of using pots, hanging baskets, three tiered to kind of create hanging baskets all around. And you could do this with multiple colors, but I also thought that was a great way to use containers in a creative way. So actually using, you know, plain plastic containers. And then the way you layer them is you create a tree, you know, of a, a tree of beautiful color. So it's really, again, thinking outside the box because I, I was also really pleased with this because I thought, wow, I never thought of using just containers to create something that looks like a tree with just a burst of color. And you can do this with, you know, variations of color. You can really plan this out well. Um, or you can just do it like this where they have, which is one color monotone, which is just gorgeous with your favorite plants and, you know, keeping them together. And then this one I thought was so clever as well too, you know, using the top of the container for the head of this little creature, this little person that they created in the garden and very natural, very tastefully done. And then using the container as a piece of something that is a structure or that's something creative in the in the garden. I thought that was really cleverly done. 
Um, okay. Um, this one, I mean, the one on the left that I wanted to show you, like here's a standard container that we would think of trailing ivy and then an old barbecue. How many times have we seen a barbecue on the side of the road on garbage day? I mean, I don't think I would do this. I'm, I'm, but I think it's very interesting and it might work in the right application. And if you have it and it makes sense, I mean, it, this one's really well done. I was so pleased with this and you could even layer you know other plants on the bottom if you wanted to um depending upon how you lay it out here but what are what a, i mean so creative and what a clever idea if it works for your style it works for your garden uh but just really thinking outside the box and repurposing uh and i haven't seen that done before um i continue with you know these chests of drawers and these little vanities they're great um for corner areas of a front porches and things like that. This one's quite well done um, as well. And it could be, as I was talking about, it can kind of blend in or it can really steal the show. Like this one, it's, you almost don't see the plants. I mean, they're there, but they're really like the yellow just grabs your attention. Um, so whether you want it to be a backdrop and blend away, or you want it to just stand out and have punch and personality, you can do that and change it up with plants. Um, this one is old oil funnels uh, that were used, they're galvanized steel. And then her husband added the little change to them. So using something that you may have had or an antique that you keep from a family member. I love this idea because they were from her grandfather and they just got passed on, passed on and they were in the garage and they were cleaning up and they're like, hang on a second, maybe I could use these in the garden. And you put your you know, chicken wire, you put your moss or your coconut liner or whatever you need to in the pot, make sure you've got good drainage so things aren't falling through. But what a great idea and, you know, and grouping them together. This was the idea of sometimes if you have just a standalone, it might not work. But I love this idea of grouping three similar things that typically wouldn't be in the garden, you know, using these oil galvanized pieces and then using the three in a row. And, you know, the way they come, you've got to add maybe the chain or, or put, you know, an extra piece to them instead of using it as is. But that's another way of using uh, uh, containers in a different in a different way. These ones are a little bit over the top as well. I mean, I've seen this in, you know, Mexico and, and Southern California, and it's basically, you know, sort of creating this staircase and creating this rock feature within the garden that incorporates plants. And it's not for everybody. I mean, you've got to know what you're doing with something like this as well, too. And it requires a lot of stone, but it does give a lot of vertical height and a lot of interest. And it could be quite, you know, striking depending on the application and how it's used. And then something as simple as, you know, a Halloween fixture that was used with the right plant to sort of create this one's a little i mean it's a little different it's definitely not for everybody uh, but it's really creative and making it i love the idea of it of how they've made it look like it's hair so maybe maybe i wouldn't use the skeleton i know for me that would kind of it wouldn't be my taste i wouldn't like that but i love the idea of creating something that looked like the face or having something that was more of a natural face not a skeleton and doing hair so it looks like it's naturally growing out of it. So again, it's it's really uh, all of our imaginations, how far you wanna take it. Um, sometimes this is another great example. Sometimes we have something in the yard that we can't, we don't wanna replace it's too, uh, or I mean, uh, to deal with or to tackle. Old stump trees, for example, sometimes they're very costly and to dig up all the root systems and things like that people don't wanna do. And I thought this was, this was one of the best examples I've seen of using a root stump hollowed out and then used for plantings. And I just love how it's softer and it kind of blends in. It looks like it's meant to be there rather than sort of a big tree stump. So I love this application. I've seen many on Pinterest that I didn't like because they look like you just don't wanna spend the time or the money to dig out the tree stump. But this one caught my eye because I thought, Wow, it's really pretty. It's actually made it look beautiful and it's made it look like a container that's natural in the garden rather than a mistake or something that, you know, that's a part of the garden that you you want to get rid of. You've, they've actually blended it in quite nicely. I love this one on the on the right. This is the jellyfish, like using, you know, um, the succulents with dichongia is just great for that or any type of ivy. But I love this one where it's just, it's not about the container, uh, but the container itself is made from the plants and made to look interesting. I mean, for me, when I saw this, I was like, that is phenomenal. It looks like a jellyfish, you know, it creates such interest. It's such a beautiful focal point. And it's kind of taking, you know, you could put this of course in a container, but it wouldn't look as striking as if it was hanging over a hanging basket. It's kind of taken on a new meaning and coming outside the container is another way to look at it. Just like this one, instead of keeping it sort of in the wraps of this container, it's spilling out and being incorporated all around so that it actually looks like it's a part of it. 
and it looks natural and it looks like it was always meant to be there. And I think that's the key. So here's another application with a bike. And I thought this one was a little bit more rustic. They kind of left the bike in its natural tone and put on just a natural um, uh, basket on it, but it can be done, you know, to maybe things aren't going to grow as well under this tree stump. There's a couple of things growing there, but you can really add, and you know, it's just from, from this base to here would just be all tree. And you know, to somebody might be like, oh, that, I don't wanna see that, I wanna see something else. So it's a great way to think about spots now in your garden that maybe need some personality or that you wanna just cover or hide. And you can do that creatively with different containers and different mediums, like using the bike with the basket container. And I thought this one was really pretty. Um, this was when I was at a bed, bed and breakfast in the Maritimes. And like, it's almost like a welping, welcoming cart. And I've seen sewing machines done as well too. Um, not well, but this one I thought was so beautifully done and it's like a welcoming cart. And I thought it was just so pretty and it's on its own. I mean, it's it's away from the garden. It's not incorporated into the garden. I love that this one is incorporated in the garden. This one's a standalone and it still works really well. It's connected to the house in terms of the color, the nice clean white, and yet it's got some personality and it's high off the ground. So lots of very interesting ideas in terms of containers. Um, this is one um, that you see more in, in the gardens, but I love the idea of forms as well. So I, I want to show you sort of like the butterfly idea where you can incorporate it. I love using forms. They are a little bit more maintenance. One of my favorite is going to the gardens in Gatineau, Quebec. Um, and, you know, seeing all these sculptures and pieces, I really want to find something that's a metal that can support, um, you know, doing a medium like this, like putting in either the moss or the soil or enough to hold the plants. But I thought, you know, on a smaller scale, this is just gorgeous. Um, another example of a pot spilling out with color and a lot of broken pots sometimes are used. And so it's, you know, even if one of your favorite, favorite pottery has broken, you can still take that and make it look like, okay, it was meant to be like that or not broken. And then the, another idea I thought this was really beautiful. I saw this at another, um, one of the, um, uh, butterfly, uh, conservatories that we were at in uh, Columbus, Ohio. And I love this because it was using this piece on the tree. So using a butterfly to basically you know, have a little bit of area with support for soil to then have this be a part of it. So another unusual way to use a container. So it's part of the story. It's not just a container for it, but it's really providing interest in, and it's really creative and it works really well with this plant, um, this plant life that's coming out of it. So you've got to think about your plant. You know, like this plant works wonderful. If you put in something that's maybe bigger with a lot of leaves and, you know, that's not going to trail as nicely, it won't have the same impact. So think about the impact you want. I mean, this could have been done with completely different flowers or just, you know, grasses and things like that, but you wanna think about your shape. So I think the plant material is just as important um, as the, the container itself, because putting the right color combinations, putting the right textures, how it's gonna fit into the garden, how it's gonna layer in um, and being really creative and creating, you know, vertical height, creating interest in different areas of the garden is just as important as the plants you put in it or the containers. Um, this one, I thought just a great, I mean, galvanized, these sort of tubs and containers are very, very popular now, very, very big this year. And I thought this one layering it in, and we typically would think, okay, we have three different containers, one here, one here, and one here. We'll plant these out three different separate ones, but another great idea, look at how they've layered them. So you need less plants, but it actually creates, you know, a really sort of overflowing fountain kind of look to it. You can have one, you know, I thought of the idea of having something spill so it looks like a waterfall, like something spilling like a trailer plant. But this one is gorgeously done with color and interest and personality. And just, you know, and another where you don't have to fill up three containers of plants because you're putting one container in the next. So you're, you're kind of getting the height and the variation with the plants. Here's another use. This is an old, old uh, metal colander from the kitchen with, uh, you know, just a, a beautiful calibrachoa or is that one of the No, that's a calibrachoa. Um, so you can do that. This one's got geraniums in it an ivy. And again, it's at a door. It's, it's just a wonderful way to incorporate it. I love the vertical height on this and then layering it with something else. But galvanize is really, really popular. Um, so even if you get a gift from somebody or you've got, you know, I have one in my bathroom downstairs with guest towels that's brand new. And I'm like, okay, you know, as soon as that thing's got a couple scratches and it's beat up, it's going in the garden. I can poke some holes in it and I can incorporate it in the garden because I've got some different elements that'll work. So lots of creative ideas. Oh, how am I doing for time? Okay, I've got 12 minutes. 
I love this idea. This is another another pot with the sedum that I showed you before. But then I thought, oh, this is just fabulous. This I saw on Pinterest. So the wagon wheels, I've typically seen them hanging in the garden. You know, they're, they're a focal point in yards, but they're a standalone. I've never seen them planted up like this. And I thought this was just magnificent. And I want to use this. So I've got a wagon wheel that's much smaller. It's about 14 uh, inches. And I'm trying to incorporate it by cutting it all out and putting it on the base of an umbrella where there's concrete. And I thought, what well, I'm, I'm anxious to finish this project this year and I'm filming it. So I will, I'll have that posted uh, probably later on in the season. Um, but I just thought it was a great idea. Imagine incorporating an umbrella or an umbrella base with the right size and then putting in the plant material, lining it properly, obviously. Um, but what a fantastic idea. I love the wagon wheel and I've never seen it done that way. And even incorporating the little gears to finish it off or not. And then using different, uh, different sizes. And uh, this is again from my garden. So containers, whether I hang, you know, you know, just your typical cone um, or something interesting like this bird feeder or, you know, it, it's, or something on, on the, on the, the fence, the, the cocoa liner uh, containers. It's how you layer them all up, you know, layer them together at different heights, the plant material you put in it and the interest it's creating in your garden. So I, uh, I hope you have a lots of fun, um, you know, thinking of different ideas here's a couple more containers putting different plant materials I just sometimes I just use foliage no flowers uh, incorporating perennials like this chameleon plant the caryopsis some coleus that's an annual and um, some sedum some burnished sedum and this one's just coleus but I've used a barbary in here so whether your containers are big bright bold containers or you know they're they're layered with plants that make them interesting it's it's really up to you to dream and uh, and sort of you know dream as big a dream as you want. And I'll leave you with these two slides. I love this using an old ladder as a chalice with chicken wire. I thought what a great idea and it works in this space. And then this is the piece de resistance. This dump truck that's parked on somebody's huge property with the flowers just falling out. I mean, imagine seeing that on the road. You'd just be stopped dead in your tracks to go and see. So you know, see what's going on and to see how beautiful that is. What a great idea! It could have just been an eyesore of this piece of machinery or this truck that's you know not being used, but instead it's a piece of art. So whether it's a, something as simple as chicken wire on a ladder that you have, or it's as big as grand as this. You know, I hope you think about containers in a, in a completely new light and you think about the plant materials and you think about reusing and you think about those wonderful areas in your garden that might need a little bit more punch or a little bit more of a focal point or just layering. Um, but whatever you decide, happy container gardening. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I'm about eight minutes shy, but I want to leave some time for questions. Um, so I, I, I will put myself off of sharing screen and then I'll open it up to questions. Okay, let me get rid of that. Oh, okay. Let me go to full screen. Okay, so I'm ready to take your questions. I hope you are inspired um, to look at containers and look at things in a completely different way. Thank you for having me at your Gardens Craft tonight. Thanks, Annette. Okay, I'm not, okay. Can you guys hear me? Thumbs up. Huh. Can anybody, can everybody hear me? Thumbs up? Yeah, we can. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I didn't know if I lost you there or not. So. Don't forget to unmute yourself if you have questions. Sarah? Oh, yes. Um, do you use, uh, soluble fertilizer in your containers or the long lasting i use the soluble. I, I use a combination of sometimes what i'll do is i'll i'll get a good uh, a potting mix and i'll do uh, peat moss and i'll do a triple mix and i'll do um sheep manure or, or cow manure and then i also use like the pro mix organic pellet uh source fertilizer or i use something that's a soluble as well depending on what plants i have i like to use more soluble for roses um, and I like to use more of the, the granular for throughout the gardens and in the containers. And in, in, I find it a lot easier to work in with the soil and I can add some compost or I can add some manure in my containers. I like the granular one a lot better than the soluble one, but it just depends on the plant. And is it 2020, 20, 20 or 2030, 15? 20, usually 2030, 20, 15. Yeah. Yeah. High phosphate. 
high phosphate. That's the one that goes. Oh, that, you're, that, you're, will, that will bring up the flowers. Yes. It's quite a miracle. Oh, yes. And just, you know, I, fresh, fresh soil in the containers as well, too. Sometimes I, what I'll do is um, if I have big containers, I will do um, something in the bottom so that the containers have like those really super tall containers. You know, you'll be filling them with bags and bags of soil. Um, but what I'll, or I'll use the old soil from a shallower container to fill the bottom up. And then I'll do at least half of the container with brand new soil, fresh soil, um, or put something in the bottom so that it's kind of makes the container half so it's not as full with soil so that so that the plant is forced to grow rather than develop more roots. So it just depends on the type of container and the size and what you want to do. Thank you for the question. Hello. Yeah. What do you do with all the pots in the winter time? So I actually have under my deck, under our deck, we've actually built an opening under the deck because I find it's so much to put them in the garage and to carry them around. I mean, you can do it. And I have, um, I have all of my materials or so they won't, I have a lot of the Veradec materials so that they won't be cracked with the cold under the deck in the winter or frost. Um, but typically I empty them all out. I throw the soil in different areas in the garden um, or ones that I'm gonna rework uh, in the bottom of the container, for example. And then I put them underneath my deck so that they're there. Um, and then any other sort of uh, container where I've got indoor plants uh, that I've taken outside, I will wash them all out and repot them and resoil them and bring them back in. So like in the kitchen area, but most of my outdoor containers or anything creative, um, and if it's something that's like more on a permanent basis, like the rings or like a little wheelbarrow or something like that, that you're going to put in your in your garden, I would leave it out. And knowing that, you know, maybe it's not going to weather so perfectly if you put something interesting and every four or five years or whenever it looks really bad, then you can change it out with a new container um, or a new interesting piece, whether it be a wheelbarrow or something just that's creative. So think about if you don't want to be able to store it. If you're going to keep it out in the garden, what that's going to look like if you want to change it over or if you if you do have the room to store it, you can store it as well. But I kind of like it to be a lot easier than because I have a ton of containers. I like to just like just have them under the deck and put them away and not have to carry them around and hang them up and all this stuff because it's a lot of work already. You know, it just depends right. on what, how much time you've got and how much work you want to how much backbreaking, you know, you want to do. So but, you know, mm -hmm. gardeners where it's a labor of love. So we don't mind <laughs> usually. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Jackie, I had two questions for you. Yes. Your presentation was awesome. It's very inspiring. Um, oh, thank you. No, you're welcome. Number one, um, your use of foil, I don't even know how to say that word, foil, foilage. Foilage, your, yes. Yeah, foliage, foliage, yeah. In your garden and in all your pots. What is your decision for that versus um, flowers? Is it to do with like the back breaking or like the extended period of color? I'm obsessed. It's it's a called a little bit of a sickness and obsession with foliage. Um, for me, if I go to the garden center or I'm choosing between a plant with a gorgeous flower or a plant with a foliage, uh, you know, 90% of the time I will gravitate to the foliage. I have a real obsession with just foliage. I just think it's spectacular. And the reason I love it uh, I do have flowers, of course. I have clematis and hydrangeas and beautiful flowers. So don't get me wrong. I love my flowers. I'm a gardener. But the reason I love the foliage is that there's times in the garden, especially because we live in Canada, there's times in the garden in the early spring where flowers aren't up. You know, and I don't love bulbs because they're like, to me, they're so temporary. And for me, if I had a huge yard, sure, I would do layers upon layers of, layers of spring flowering bulbs um, because then I would have that color and I have, I have that punch from the flower. But because my yard is so small, I've got to maximize everything in the yard so I have personality. And for me, the foliage carries me through the seasons. So I have Barbary coming up in the spring. I've got hostas coming up in the spring when flowers aren't even on the radar. I've got, you know, early sedum plants. I've got rock crest, I've got all different uh, variations with different foliage, um, with color and interest and personality that brightens the garden and brightens these dead spaces that are just, you know, soil or dark when we're coming out of winter. And then even going into winter, I plant a lot of grasses that, that stay throughout the winter and they have beautiful blooms. And even though they're dried, they provide, you know, seeds for the birds and they provide interest in the garden. So for me, the foliage plants um, are really sort of 
filling in those gaps of there isn't a, a blooming time and it's brightening up. The, I don't like to see soil. So I like to compact them together. Um, and the foliage, you can do that. You can have them layered a lot easier than a flowering plant. So hostism I go to, um, Heliopsis I love. I mean, I just, there's so many different varieties of foliage. Jacob's Ladder, um, uh, Wigilia's, gorgeous, gorgeous foliage plants. And for me, it's just, you know, I have, I'm not so worried about the flowering. I'm really concerned about layering the reds and the blues and the greens and the yellow blues and the, all the different variations. So I'm obsessed about it. I hope that answers. Yeah, it does. Cause I, I feel a lot that way too. I'm exactly the same as what you're describing. Um, second question for your containers that you're doing, do you have like a set combination of colors that you would put in or are you going from like texture and like brights with like a yellow with a purple like how do you go about color combos uh, it changes every year for me so this what I do is I follow garden national garden bureau and I kind of say okay what's the flower of the year um, so or what's happening in the year so a couple of years ago when we had the, the 150th anniversary for Canada Day I thought my garden is going to be Canadian proud and I just built on the theme of red and white and red and white and I looked to find many different combinations with you know white variegated leaves um, white that's in another presentation I do foliage and, and different things if, you, if, if I ever get another chance to do another presentation um, but I, I, I sort of pick a theme each year and then I go with that um, this year is a year of the sunflower and the lavender and the was last year. Lavender was last year. So I based it off purples and I love purples. So last year I did purples and pinks and the lavender was the focal point for me. This year, it's the year of the sunflower and I'm actually growing sunflowers in a large, a couple of containers. And then I'm building on that because I can't put sunflowers in the garden, uh, with other plants because they're toxic. Let me just turn off my timer, um, to other plants. I've done them on their own. So I've got that theme going. And then I've picked up on the yellow and the purple theme because I realized this year with COVID too, there wasn't a lot of variety with color combinations in the garden centers. So earlier on, I saw a lot of yellow and I thought, okay, that's going to go with my sunflower theme. And then I layer in textures and then, you know, other different plants within that. So it's kind of like what's happening um, for me, or if it's for, you know, a, something, a particular color trend, I'm also a color designer. I do home decor and design. So I'll know that, oh, the Pantone color of the year last year was coral. So, you know, but I didn't end up using that in the garden. So I kind of pull my uh, color combinations from things that inspire me, or sometimes I'll just see a fabulous plant and then it dictates what my combinations will be. But here's the caveat. If it's yellow and purple like it is this year, I'm not gonna do the same plants. So I have sunflowers on the deck. Then I have um, yellow calibrachoas with purple irises uh, there for the spring. Then I'm gonna sub out those irises. I have a lilac, um, a purple lilac that's a reblooming bush with calibrachoas that are yellow. Then I have some petunias with some geraniums and the petunias are actually that lovely um, light pale yellow and the geraniums are white. Um, so it all depends. So I will kind of keep the color combination fluid in the garden, but I won't repeat plants. Sometimes if I put, you know, something that matches on the deck, like when you go down the, the, our deck into the backyard, I've got two containers that are sort of tall, pivotal containers. I keep them the same. So this year they've got ossiporium in them and they've got petunias in them and they are all purple and, um, and yellow. I can take you guys out in the garden if you want as well too, if you'd like me to do that and show you. Um, but to give you an idea of containers, but I don't, I mix it up. And then sometimes I'm just like, okay, this year is a combination of purples and yellows. But I found when I went out to the garden centers and the grocery stores to get some things, um, I didn't find a lot of color combinations that, you know, where I could say, oh, I have this for shade and this for, it was more what's available. So I kind of bought what was available, but it's whatever, you know, whatever theme or mood, whatever strikes me, whatever gravitates. I have a rule. I don't buy a plant that I don't love. So if I don't love it, I live without it. So I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, it does. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Thank you for your kind comments. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Any more questions? Okay. Anybody? Yes. Well, not a question so much as at the end of the season when my uh, containers, not that many of them, are finished for the season. Okay. Leave them out put some evergreen branches in it and some other stuff and some plastic ornaments and stick some lights in it. And there I've got my Christmas arrangement. 
Absolutely. I mean, you just you, you're repurposing it and just creating that live or creating something more vibrant. I'll, I have mines in my front porch and my front porch is covered. So I have like begonias and I have some ivies and things that indoor plants that go outside. And then as fall comes, you know, I can't really put too many things in there that don't require, it won't last as long. Um, so I'll add like a cabbage plant and then I put in branches and I make like a whole fall Halloween or I make something that's early fall and then late fall. And then I head right into Christmas with, you know, different branches and things like that. And sometimes it's just creating a scene. Sometimes it's just, you know, putting in some birds with some branches, just creating a natural piece. Sometimes at my containers, I'll put like, I'll get tree, um, peach tree blossoms that I can buy um, at some, um, some places in the West End. And I put water in the, like a vase is in that container that's sitting on my porch and I have just tree blossoms. So it, it's just using it in different ways um, and not having to cart that container around and carry it around. If you can reuse it, sure. And then if you can put an interesting container as well too, it works really well. Or, you know, like putting a wheelbarrow on the porch with some hay and some pumpkins in it. It's a great way to just create a different scene and it still has some garden elements to it and some natural elements. For sure. I mean, it's, it, there's really, it's, it's as creative as you want it to be. That's what's lovely, lovely about it. Just like our gardens, I've never seen two gardens the same. And, you know, I think that it's, it's about using that inspiration and that creativity and what we're drawn to. I always say, trust your gut, you know, or, or the plants, as I say, you know, as gardeners, we say, I had to have it, you know, you'll see a plant and it's like, um, I was on another horticultural group last night doing a different presentation. And the lady said, you know, I saw this plant come and it was $50. And I'm like, no, it's too much. It's too much. And then she said, it showed up one day, a smaller version for $18. And she was like, I had to have it. And I'm like, yeah, there's some plants. I don't care the cost. I have to have it. Right. So I think if you let that guide you, um, the plants that you gravitate to for whatever reason, flowers, foliage, composition, and, and, you know, using different for me, I love even looking at, you know, heart shaped leaves or, you know, leaves that have interesting um, shapes to them so not just the color uh, but the shapes of the leaves and pairing those things together so just have fun with it and it's really you know it's it's as, as wild as your imagination can go any more questions oh nobody i can't see everybody's hands up so i I don't know if anybody else. No, I guess you answered. <laughs> you said you had you answered everything quite well, and uh, sure enjoyed your talk. Maybe we'll get to meet you again next year at Canada. Oh, absolutely! If it's open, then just send me shoot me an email. I would love to meet up with you, Annette. That'd be great. Yes. And I'm hoping to speak at Canada Blooms again. I was scheduled to speak for their 25th anniversary, but it's oh. been postponed and postponed. So uh, right. I'm, I'm we're all anxious to get back to the shows and to Canada Blooms and um, and just being able to you know get out again. It'd be so nice, you know. I know it's been yes. a difficult year for everybody, but thank we're goodness we've had our gardens. It's been my garden has been a sanctuary for me. I mean, uh, I know it's a big trend this year for people who are just starting, and I think that's wonderful. We're going to get new first-time gardeners, uh, but for us, you know, gardeners from the past. I mean, my gardeners was a retreat and a, and a sanctuary for me. And I was so thrilled to have it and be in the space. And, you know, those days when you were worried about what was happening in the world, it just, my garden centers me. It's, you know, my time where I'm still, I call it my time with God, you know, or the universe, um, something bigger than all of us. And I just have such peace and joy and clarity. And uh, it's, it's just been a very, um, transcended for me having it this in the last you know 18 months with COVID and all these the scenarios happening in the world it's been a, it's been quite a haven for me yes it sure has for as I'm sure time. all of us and a lot of people have gone into a lot of new people into gardening and planting vegetables especially. yes <laughs> I mean and vegetables are another great thing to put in containers oh and I didn't mention in my presentation I, I'm sorry I forgot to mention herbs um, one of the things I did a few years ago too is I put, put different herbs with flower combinations. So unexpected. So, and again, with my obsession with the, with the foliage. Um, so for example, I'll have, you know, petunias and some grasses in a, in a container and I'll throw in a variegated thyme or I'll throw in a rosemary because it, as my thriller piece, because the structure of that plant is so unique 
and the leaves are so interesting, followed by annuals all around it. So incorporating herbs in your containers as well too. It's a practical way to put, keep them in a container, but also have some interest. Um, and then, you know, and then, and then it's serving two purposes. You've got this container that's beautifying, but you're actually using it as well too. So, uh, and it goes for anything with the containers. You can put any herbs in them. And I like different combinations as well. Um, I like putting parsley in with oregano, even though one, you know, sort of takes over. Um, or I like putting, I like cilantro I keep on its own because it can get really kind of scraggly and sort of die down. Um, dill I've actually used as well too as focal points because it grows nice and tall. Um, and sort of the seeds that come from it are quite pretty as well. And any variegated sort of um, sage with the purple and the cream and the white leaves, I love using in containers just as an accent plant. I'm not big on cooking with sage. I don't really know what to do with it, uh, but I just buy it for the foliage. So you know this about me already. So not a surprise <laughs> to hear me say that. But the pink and purple and green and white foliage, oh, I just love it. And, and I do sort of dry some sage. And every time I, I do have a recipe that calls for it, I have a little jar that I've dried. And I'm like, okay, finally, I can use it. But typically, I don't know what to do with it. I definitely use more time and, you know, all the sort of the regular ones, the oregano, the parsley, the cilantro, that kind of stuff. I use a lot more rosemary. But <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you. I use a lot of herbs, too, which... No, it's nice. Anybody else? Uh, no, no. I was just going to comment um, about the herbs in the uh, containers. Not too long ago, uh, Paul Zamet was doing a Zoom, a Zoom or a webinar on on container planting, and he had um, parsley, like curly parsley. Uh, you know, not not Italian parsley, but the curly. Parsley. Yeah, the curly one, yes. Yeah, it looked fantastic. It really, really did look mi like mixed with the flowers, like you said. It yeah. was just, it was really gorgeous. I'm going to try that one time because it's great for flower arranging too. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's and it's something beautiful and natural and it's got like an yeah. interesting shape. And that's what yeah. I go on, I based on the plant. But the only thing is if you're going to use the parsley, then you can't, you know, start cutting it back because then that container is not gonna look so nice. So you just put, but using it just as a plant is wonderful. And you think about herbs, they're fairly inexpensive. You know, the ones I bought from Loblaws this year were the Gigantico ones, and it was, was like a variegated thyme. And I just threw that into a container and I have it, but I'm probably not gonna use that much time, but I love how it looks, like you said, the parsley. So it's just being really creative with it. And, you know, I think that's, that's what I, I hope that this sparks you know, us looking at things in a different way. I hope it sparks that creativity when you're out there. It's not just the herb or it's not just a container um, for what it was used for. How can we use it differently? And how can we, and you know, the thing is you don't like it, you you put it away at the end of the summer or you put it away, right? You move it to somewhere else. I love that about container gardening because it, and it can add a pop of color, a pop of interest, um, just personality, shape, height. It just gives you like, it runs the gamut and you can look at all the different places in your garden. So when you get out back in your, in your garden, sometimes there are some dark spots where there's plants, you know, overpowering something and you need, and they, they could be a plant there, but you can't put one in because it's going to be overpowered. But if you put a container with height, then you can get, you know, a, a wonderful extra plant in the garden, even if it's just for a season. Yeah. So I look at them a whole new way. Now I look at things, that wagon wheel thing that I'm doing under the umbrella. I was I'm look, I look at everything now completely different just before I'm about to recycle something or throw something out. I'm like, hang on a minute. Is there a possibility? <laughs> so just have fun with it. Great. Yeah. I, any more questions? Anybody or no? Nothing else? Members, do you want to close off or your last chance to ask? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Well, thank you. Any more? No. Well, thank you so much, uh, Jackie. Thank uh, you. Nancy. Very different presentation. We try to get different speakers, different ideas. So thank you so much. No and problem. And I... We'll probably see you next year, Canada Blooms. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much for having me. Thank and I have so added much. five new topics on oh, my speaker's okay. profile. So if you want to take a look at that and have me back at another time, would love to be part of your group again. Uh, but happy gardening, friends. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day and enjoy your gardens. Yes.